Uh, so today we're talking about the fact that we need to put the hammer down, right? We gotta put the hammer down. What does that terminology mean usually when people say, they gotta put the hammer down? You gotta get it done, right? You gotta get it done. Right? You gotta get it done. Oh, you just gotta get to work, okay? But uh, it comes from truck drivers, right? I did the research, church yards, and they said, put the hammer down. Man, I gotta get this car to where I gotta go. I gotta put the pedal to the metal. I gotta really gotta get it, okay? But so that comes a point in life where we have to put the hammer down. I got a uh, beat up hammer for the men. We're gonna get a beat up hammer for the Alright? And then the ladies, we get our fancy uh, high tech Home Depot hammer. Wow. Very nice. Alright? So we get that in slow for everybody there. But before we go any further, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, God, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for your presence. And right now, we pray that it's all of you and there's none of me, God. And uh, we just pray that all distractions are taken away and everyone will be focused on doing your word. So when they get out of here, they can do your will. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we like to set things off here. And by setting it off, we like to make sure everybody kind of gets involved and kind of gets to figure out what's going on. So last week, we played charades. We left one out. Yes. That was very fun, all right? So we're going to play charades again. All right? So I have volunteers volunteer, and that's none other than Foster. Give <laughs> Foster a hand. All right, he already knows the word. So Foster, here you go, get the center of the, of the aisle here. And you guys, as his teammates, have one minute to figure out what he is trying to describe. It's one word. Uh, he can't talk, but you guys can shout, scream, holler at him, okay? Y'all ready? Alright, here we go. That's the music, y'all need it, bro. A crown. Okay, that was too easy. Yeah, that was too easy. I think they have a connection, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, look at that husband and wife. She knows his every move, his every move. So that is a crown. Very good, good job, bro. Well, yeah, he was good. He was good. Okay? So a crown. But today, let's not think about it as any kind of crown, like we were as a princess or a prince or a king. Uh, let's think about the crown that Jesus Christ wore. Okay? This is a crown. A lot of times you guys thought about a crown, you didn't think about a crown of thorns. Who thought about a crown of thorns? No one. I used to be really shy. Okay? So this is a crown. This is a crown that uh, the Roman guards, they put on our, our Lord and Savior, our king. Uh, he was the king of the Jews, right? So let's keep that in mind as Christ was crucified. So uh, last week we had our communion and something was stuck with me about the fact that, you know, when we take communion, it is just for that moment. It's not like a something we remember at all times. All right? But we need to be very, very mindful of just remembering Christ and crucified for our sins. Uh, as the word tells us today. Here we come from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6. And today we come from the message Bible. Okay? The message is a paraphrase, but it gets right down to the point. I love how simple it was in the reading. Uh, we come from any verse, any kind of uh, version, but today we come from the message. Here's what it reads. It says, once people have seen the light, we say right here, see the light, be the light. Everybody, hope we've all seen the light that Jesus Christ is Lord, he is our Savior, he is our King, he is our everything, right? We've seen the light, right? They have gotten a taste of heaven and been a part of the work of the Holy Spirit. We've all done something in the church, okay? All right? Uh, once they personally experience the sheer goodness of God's word and the power of breaking in on us, the Holy Spirit of being able to do some amazing things, if they then, if then they turn their backs, then something had to happen. If then they turn their backs on it, washing their hands of the whole thing, like what, what I was saying. Well, I love the law. I'm a Christian. What are you talking about? Okay. Well, they can't start over as if nothing happened. It says that's impossible Why they re-crucified Jesus. Let's think about that for a moment. When we as Christians, okay, just say, you know what, I'm just, I'm just done with my Christianity, uh, just even for a moment. Okay, one other translation says that we crucify Christ afresh. Right? Just think about if you were to take a, a wound, you know, you just take this care of each and every day. 
Yeah. Each and every day. Yeah. Each and every time you do something, each and every moment, that is crucifying the fresh, that is opening up a fresh wound. When somebody says, I can't believe that doesn't mean five years ago. Why you open up a fresh wound? I can't believe it happened to me so many years ago. Well, I can't believe you did that yesterday. That's a fresh wound. We did it as a people, but do we really do that to Jesus Christ? Yes, we do. All right? He said, while they re-crucified Christ, Jesus Christ, they repudiated him in public. I know some of you think of repudiate. What does that word mean? We're going to get to it, but repudiate means just to just deny in public to say, you know what? No, I'm not a Christian. No, I'm not this, I'm not that. To just kind of turn you back on whatever you say you were. To be him free. Alright? So that's what we do in public. That's why a lot of times people don't really why I'll be a Christian, right? Okay. So first of all, verse precept our precept. The good, let's look at the good, alright? A lot of us have seen the light. We've experienced the good side of being a Christian, correct? Yes. When we were sick, somebody came to pray for us. We got better. When things weren't going so well, we had some help, all this kind of good stuff. But but that is really just the tip of the iceberg, okay? We've seen the light. We realize Jesus Christ is Lord and King, so we had that epiphany, right? But then what happened when we had that epiphany? Epiphany is you had that moment like, okay, I realize God is King. I realize this. I realize that. But what do we do once we experience that epiphany? Do we really change? Or do we say, okay, that's fun? Do we change or not, okay? We've enjoyed the benefits, all right? We've personally experienced the sheer goodness of God's Word, all right? We have gotten the church to help us out of situations. We've gotten blessed to do this, blessed to do that. God, thank you for the new job. God, thank you for the man. Thank you for the house. God bless all of us, right? Okay? So this is what happened. And then we realized the fact that God is our everything. It says here that the gift of God's word and the power is breaking in on us. We know and realize that God just takes care of everything we need. That's the good part. It's great. Christians love it. Whoop do. I'm wearing a t-shirt. I love the Lord. I love the lad. I love it all. Okay? But here comes uh, the bad. A lot of times we choose to personally reject God. We turn our backs on God. When we need to make a moment, a decision to stand up for Jesus Christ, we just turn our backs on Him. Right? You ever get a phone call from a bill collector? Uh, do you get a phone call from an area you call you don't recognize? Yeah. Like, why somebody call me from California? Decline. Reject. <laughs> Decline. <laughs> right, so, we publicly reject Jesus Christ. When we just say, you know what, I'm not about to be gentle. I'm not about to be loving. I'm not about to be forgiving. I'm not about to care. I'm not about to not lust when I see that fine woman walking in my own mall. Are there fine men walking around in the store? I'm just going to not just say, you know what, Jesus Christ, I'm going to do your work. I'm just going to turn my back on what you have to say and do my own thing. We personally reject Jesus Christ every day. How many times, how many, every day, how many times Jesus Christ calls us on a daily basis? This is the point. After a while, somebody keeps rejecting you, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to stop calling. Let's stop calling, all right? If you hey, you lost a dog, okay, and your dog is out, let's say uh, you lost a dog, you want to go, hey, 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 Coco, hey, Coco. You, you search and you search and you search for days and weeks and months. That's the why you say, right, well, I guess Coco just go. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just wasting my time here, putting all these signs and going to these mad searches. It's pointless. We do not need to do that to Jesus Christ. We do not need to just say, you know, I'm just going to reject you. Keep backing away. Keep backing away. Because mm -hmm. as the scripture said, we draw near to Christ, he draws closer to us. Yeah. Don't you think the opposite thing works? Yeah. If we just continue to back away from God, just further away, you see, because God is a constant, right? Yeah. It's just us backing away. It's just us backing away. He's just still there waiting on us to come back with loving arms, loving on us, okay? But the one thing we do not want to do is reject God. It says that we cannot just start over. Okay, we lose so much time, lose so much opportunity, we mess up relationships, we mess up ourselves. We can't just say, God, I could have had this, but well, I wasted all that time. I could have had a great relationship, but I wasn't forgiving. I wasn't I was resentful, I was selfish, I was envious. A lot of things we just could do, but we just don't. Alright? So it's impossible to go back in time. We gotta realize that. So so that's the bad. A lot of times we reject God. I'll, I use the example, we take our Christian card out when it was convenient. Right? So right now, I look around and I see that uh, Mama Boo has a shawl on, right? Because she's pretty cold. 
right? A lot of times Christians, we were close because we want to be saved, right? Ooh, when we're trying to go see God, oh, I want to be saved. God, take me in. But when it's inconvenient, can you take your shawl off? <laughs> Don't worry about it. She said you're doing the most. <laughs> okay. But now it's all she can. She's gonna party over a wild dress and be ooh, ooh, you know, we're gonna be like that, right? So she's gonna do her own thing now. The shawl is off. Yeah. We're gonna do our own thing. So I'm just gonna reject you for a moment, God, while I do my own thing. But now put the shawl back on. We go, oh, we're going to at the church. Hello. Bless <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, saints. Yeah, we're going to do our thing. Well, it's for us. We're going to do our own thing. Yeah. Be sassy, it is, and God, you know. And this is how it works. That's the bad part, all right? But here comes the ugly, all right? We have re crucified Jesus Christ. Now, see, now, is that Jerry Rice and the Cowboys jersey? Yes, oh, it is. Look at so, this is McDonald's commercial. No. Where McDonald's is doing this thing, where you can be behind the team, support the team. And Jerry Rice wearing a Cowboys jersey. He has a little Cowboys guard. And I'm like, did you see this? This guy is crazy, right? Do you see this Christian acting a fool up in his club? Come on, man. I saw her car for her at church, but she's in his work and ain't no but but this is what we just do. This is what we do, right? We say we one day we love God, but the man make us mad is what we say it, it hurts. Okay? It, it, it only just hurts ourselves, but it hurts God. You think God likes being on the cross? You think Jesus is like, oh, this is just great. I'm just going to kick back, relax. Ooh, it's, you can crucify me every day. This is what we do. His own people, his Christians, his children, his sheep. We crucify him every day. It hurts, okay? But then when we do that, we have to understand we are playing for the enemy. We're playing for the enemy in public. We are sabotaging the very religion of Christianity. All right? Christianity is slowly but surely dying. If you look at the reports and surveys, people are not serving God, not believing in God. Uh, God is who God would. Okay? Why is that? Because we are in public. We as a Christian nation, we're taking God to school. We're taking proud of school. We're taking God to everything. But God's on our money just to say, we got to be a Christian nation, right? But is God really who we are? Are we worshiping God in spirit and in truth? It's okay to be in church and sing and play and play the drum, but when you're outside of these doors, what's, what's really good? Mm. What kind of lifestyle are you really living? And when you hear the word of God, you read the word of God, are you allowed to change who you are? Are you just saying, you know, I'm going to reject that word right there? I can I can accept the fact that God loves me and see the Son and die for my sin, but when it comes down to living righteous and holy, I got to reject that God. So I'm only going to read the parts of the scripture that I like that I have highlighted. I only know so many scriptures about grace, but I don't know the scriptures about being obedient. But here I am in public acting a fool. So here it is. We want to keep it personal, all right? Uh, by sinning, because we all sin. The scripture says we all for our show the glory of God, all right? But when we choose to sin, we have to say that sinning is a personal choice, okay? Just a personal choice. Nobody forces you to sin, okay? The thing about it is keep it personal. By sinning, am I willing? Am I just going to say, just imagine Jesus Christ right there from God, I'm about to just crucify you again right now. Because my desires are more important than serving you. Am I willing to say that? Would you be willing to say, Paul, so I'm really just accepting your feet right now. Just because I want people to laugh. And I want to see you go, I want to be, I see, I see. I think that's more important than just serving God. Do the things we want to do, are they more important? Is she that good looking? Is she that good looking? Does it feel that good to curse that person out? Does it feel that good to give them a piece of your mind? Does it feel that good to sin? Does it feel that good to lust, to drink, to party, get drunk? The attention that we see from other people, does it feel that good? Is that important to us? Oh, is it that important that we say, God, I'm going to just crucify you right now. I don't care. I'm about, I'm about their life. I'm not about your life. I'm about their life, my own life. Just we do. So what we want to do right now, uh, I'm going to hand our right, first lady. Who wants to be the lady with the hammer? 
Okay. Come on, ladies. There All we right. go. Okay. Uh, first guy of the heaven. Okay. Come on. Let's. Uh, Come on, okay, Christian. Here we go. All right. He's gonna take the hammer. We got the young people taking the hammer. All right. So now we have opportunity to crucify Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh. Here you go. Uh. And you, once you're done, you can come in. Uh, you want the, the big nails? Because these are the, the nine-inch nails that they use to crucify Jesus. These are just some come in little concrete nails there. But if you want to re-crucify Jesus Christ, I'm going to put the nails right here. Um, and once you're done with it, Christian and Sierra, you can pass it on to your area the next line. You can fall in line. You can just come over right here. Like, just like these nails. We, put, we, we have some, some, some play. I don't care about the wall. Anybody, boss, we can fix the wall, all right? Yeah, we can fix the wall. But you rather, if you really ready and willing to re-crucify Jesus Christ, it's just a wall, just a picture, just an image. But we know God's everywhere, right? So I know he's inside of us. He's in these empty seats. He's outside of work. He's also here. He's out everywhere. So he's a part of the wall. So if you're willing to re-crucify Christ, you want Christ to say, I'll be shot. You're going to put the hammer down. There you go. Wow, you like the volunteer, so I'm going to give you the hammer. Me! I'm fine. This hammer kind of makes your dress, so. All right, we, we can fix the wall, so come on. We do it, we do it all the time. Oh, yeah. Y'all put it down, too. Come on, baby. Come on. Hey, yeah. What up, man? Come on, I can eat some ice cream at the end of service. Oh, oh, oh. Don't do my baby. But then, God, then they give me tempt us like that. Oh, come on, bro. I give you whatever you want, man. Come on. I know you like, I know you like that Dairy Queen Blizzard. Just come on, put the hammer down. I mean, don't put the hammer down. I mean, you feel good. Mm. They'll like you. Oh. She'll like you. They'll like you. He'll love you. He'll say he love you. Mm. He won't put a ring on it, but he'll say he love you. Oh, oh no. Mm. Sorry to be hurt, bro. Okay? But well, the situation is, we, we will to just say, Jesus, come on, just stand right here, Jesus. We all are here, down here, and just give him what we need, right? That's what we do. We, are, we really are willing to say, you know what, I'm just going to put that hammer down. Just, you, know, you, just, you just love me too much for me just to every day, multiple times a day just to see you. And just can you imagine just taking a nail and when you just crucify him, you taking that nail and through his hand, just the, his blood just flying in your face. And you can just sit there and be like, okay, other hand. Yeah, let me get these feet too. Put them in. Keep, keep still now, Jesus. I know this hurts. I know this is your child doing this. I know you died for my sins, but I just, I just got to do this. So just let me get that in and, and come up. So don't scream too loud, Jesus. So please, though, so, because make it easy on me. Make this sin easy on me, right? I don't want anybody to know about it. I don't want anybody to see about it. I don't I want to cover my chain, delete the history. Delete. So just, just so right now, God, can you just be quiet while I put the hammer down on the nails in your hands and your ankles and your feet? Can you just do that for me? Right? So nobody wanted to. I go back to that slide if we need to. Nobody wanted to. We're good? Okay. But look at some of y'all. We got some good news. We'd like to have good news. Give God some praise for the good news. Right? Here's what it says, alright? The word of God says that the only temptation that we have, that ice cream, that joy, that feeling, that pleasure, that sense of pride, all that other good stuff. It says the only temptation that we have are the same temptation that all people have. We all struggle. That same woman, that same man, we all see it, but we got to resist the same temptation. We could all be up in the club turning up, getting drunk, passed out, smoking, we could all do that. If it feels good to them, probably because it feels good to us too. Right? That's how it works out. But we can trust God. You can trust God. Now you can almost count on Him, or uh, you can almost depend on Him, but He might come through 80% of the time. It says that we can trust God. He will not let you be tempted more than you can bear. 
So that there, there's no way in the world you guys just somebody he just forced you just to crucify him. The touch, the taste is not that tough. Tim, that fine. He's not that fine. It doesn't feel that good. Once you feel good, you're going to be feeling good again. You curse him out, and you'll probably curse you back out. You'll be going. The, the feeling is not that good. It's not worth it. Okay? It's not worth it. But when you are tempted, God will also give you a way to escape that temptation. Glory to God. There's always an escape route. Every building in architecture, every building, every room has to have an escape route. It's nothing more than a window. If this room has a window, you can guard these doors. There's usually two ways out. That's code. So even, even in life, physical, we have to respect the spiritual ramification. There's an escape route. In the spiritual realm, there's an escape route in the physical realm. It's just that simple, all right? So then we will be able to endure whatever the test is. See, we can do it today in front of our brothers and sisters. Now, I don't want to be the one to go up there and hit the wall and crucify Jesus, but we can do that when we leave here. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know that's a pretty interesting illustration. But when we get tested, what will we do? Can they, brother, can I get the hammer back? Because I'm ready to, ooh, I'm ready to. Come here, Jesus. <laughs> this is what we do. Right? Yeah. But, but here's the good news, okay? So bear with me for another minute, okay? Here's what I want to do this week. Because this is kind of personal until I've been working on, right? So I want to ask everyone for the next seven days, the next Sunday, we're going to have uh, some people here, we're going to preach the way, who are going to come and share their testimonies <laughs> about how they deal with this challenge. I see you, man. I see you, man. I see you. I see you. This is next week. We'll have a uh, lineup. All right. Hopefully, you all and some of your friends you share this with. But this is what you want to guys keep a journal. Okay. First of all, what sin you could be sins? Am I trying to avoid? Start with the one you feel is your quote unquote worst sin, the sin you struggle with the most. What sin am I trying to avoid? Listen, and I will have this on the website, I will have this on the email. You don't have to write it all down, I can tell you, okay? What sin is getting your brain, getting your spirit like I'm ready for the challenge? Because I don't want to recrucify Jesus Christ. Okay? What sin am I trying to avoid? Alright? Then for the next seven days, tally. Just, just keep the first one a little check mark. How many times have you been, or were you tempted to commit this sin? I was committed to do this. All right, on Sunday. After you leave this church, you can be, all right, you're going to go back to your spot. The temptation is waiting on you once you walk out the door. Okay? How many times were you, well, you could, uh, tempted? All right, every time you're tempted, tell me how many times you think about Jesus on the cross. For your sin. The very sin you are tempted to commit, I want you, God wants you, to just think about the hammer. Think about it. Think about that, his blood as you pierce him. Think about that, alright? Then tell her how many times you chose to sin anyway. You so big, you so bad, I'm just a guy, you know what? You gotta take this for the team. One more time. I know you did over 2,000 years ago, but you're going to take it for the team today. Because I got to get it in. Right? How many times did you choose to see it anyway? All right? Then tell how many times you were able to resist it. Because there's an escape route we just got to be talking about. Y'all don't see my yellow from the chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At the, at the end of each day, I want you guys just describe how you feel. All right. Describe how you feel about your effort to be a living sacrifice. That's what the scripture wants to be. A living sacrifice. It's not just a cool experiment. We're not going to write a book. We're not going to put it on TV or junk. It's just about you growing as a mature Christian. About you saying, God, I want to be that living sacrifice because you are a living sacrifice. I don't have to crucify you today because you were crucified 2,000 years ago for my sins. Y'all so, y'all just soaking down by my radar. Like y'all just soaking all this in right now. So for the next seven days, I want you guys to do this. And you want to email me with all the details. So then next week, it's going to be you here. Feeling just as excited and pumped up as I am. I feel I've been holier than ever. Not to be holier than now, but just... If you just think about how great God is and just say, God, I'm not about to, I just can't do it. 
like Christian Sierra we, we couldn't I'm not about to go through this even in public right but in private are you willing to do it this is what the ask God says, all right? So, as we get ready to close, the conclusion of the marriage is this. Oh next week, you're hoping for the rest of your life. We don't try to just make a weak lifestyle change, a, a continuous, forever lifestyle change. All right? The conclusion of that is this, is that when you are tempted to sin, it's going to come. I don't care who you are, what role you play, it is going to come. When you're tempted to sin, I don't care if you think it's something so little as to uh, being rude or being obnoxious or being vain or, you know, or thinking highly of yourself than you should or, or even joking about somebody like, you know, right? People might not like you talking about that. That's God's creation. Yeah, I, I need some help. It might be funny to me, but I just can't do that anymore. Okay? Just think about it, right? Remember Jesus on the cross, once again, he died for your sins, the very sins that you are tempted to commit. He died for it. It's just that simple. You ready for the challenge? Let me clear my mind. I'm going to clear my ear. Are y'all ready for the challenge? Yeah. All right. So are y'all are truly ready to be the light. All right. The scripture says we've seen the light. So now it's about time for us to go and be the light. For our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on, give God a round of applause. Um, our confession of faith is kind of what says, all right? Uh, the confession of faith is simple. We know that life and death is in the power of tongue, okay? You guys are probably going to, when I say you guys, we all, it's, it's, it takes uh, self-control, all right? It's also, uh, somehow, you know, I downloaded an app, look for an app, it's called the self-control app. You can list that in your phone as well to help you. What am I trying to resist? This, that, and the other. Uh, I give you all the details about it just to help us. But life and death is in the power of the tongue. And we believe that God's word is making me wiser. God's word is making me stronger. And God's word is making me better.